Hello everybody and welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures and today we are going to take a descent into the Kingless City which comes to us today from Miniatures Blueprint. So I will admit when I saw the non-gold version of our friend here, Longlegs the Knight, Sir Longlegs to you and my dad, um, I could not help but be intrigued as I banged the camera, apologies there. Uh, I just had absolutely no idea what was going on with this night, but immediately it got my creative thoughts a-flowing in my head. Yes, I painted him gold, I was busy spray painting Custodes stuff, and I thought, what a perfect base, this guy just looks all sorts of fabulous, and then, then I started looking deeper into the Kingless City. So it's got two opposing factions, the Church and the People, and We've got some really interesting models on both sides of the conflict, and I was lucky enough, thanks to Miniatures Blueprint, to actually take a closer look at some of the models, and I thought I would share that with you guys today, especially with the campaign well on its way to being funded, if not already funded by the time this video goes up, and it better be by the time I ever get around to watching it myself when I have a free moment at work. I uh, don't know when that'll ever be, but yeah, fingers crossed. Um, there's just some interesting stuff going on that which I really would like to share. So the nice thing about long legs here is he's actually a free model. If you're interested, obviously take a look at the campaign link. You can download them yourself there. I did not do the greatest job removing the supports. And I will say this, that the supports were actually quite nicely done. Um, but looking closer at things, I started to notice some really interesting things. Like the fact that he has no fingers. That sword is basically just kind of thrust through his hands. That does seem to be a design decision, which I thought was quite interesting. But then looking at some of the other knights, at first I thought, well, maybe it was just an early rendition of the model. But then I started to notice some other weird uh, intentional idiosyncrasies with the knight models that belong to the church. So I'm going to chalk that up to just some, some interesting shenanigans going on with things in this city of No King. Obviously, I'm going to dirty it up because I think these guys are perfect for games like, uh, what's it called? Forbidden Psalm, Mort Borg. Uh, I know there's the mass combat version of Forbidden Psalm, which is escaping my mind at the moment, but definitely I think these models are going to fare quite well with models in that grim, dark aesthetic. I uh, wanted to show you one of Long Legs' friends here. Sharp Legs! I saw this, and I don't know what's going on with this deranged little starfish like gnome ish bean with spiky thimble hands and pointy blade feet, as well as this quite menacing helmet. I'm like, this guy has got to get on my table. I have no idea how I'm going to get him attached to a base. That's going to be a fun challenge. Speaking of bases, they do have some nice ones. We have kind of a nice church base right there, and we'll show off in a moment one of the people bases, which are some nice cobblestones. But our diminutive little friend here, I don't know, you know he's going to get up to no good. Look at him. I mean, and I printed up these guys at their native resolution. That is what I am often want to do. And we will find our usual witch hunter friend there, just to give you a good size indicator. I feel like our friend Longlegs could go even longer. I'm kind of tempted. But one of the nice things is almost every model that I've had a chance to print so far actually does fit on to the 25mm bases. So that's always a nice plus. I want to say, um, let's see here, I have a few of the models for the people's side of things and one that comes to my mind that is a quite a standout model here is the cursed medic now we've had plenty of plague doctor mask wearing guys but I like the fact that they just went all in and continued the bird like theme sadly there are no real feathers I mean I guess you could paint it looks like more fur on his back there you can see his uh medicinal staff there. Interesting pose on both the skulls and the gravestone. As I always like to comment, I will do a little bit more cleanup. It is sometimes hard prior to having this under the light, having this zoomed in on the camera, 
to find all those little spots that I might have missed, but I, I was quite intrigued by this model. I know Miniature's Blueprint were quite fond of him as well. And despite his size there, fits quite nicely on that 25mm base, of which this is one of the bases that they designed, those cobblestone ones I mentioned. Another friend of the people, the Executioner. The helmet style looks familiar to me that he's standing on top of. A couple little spots I still need to clean up. But again, I thought the models themselves came off the print bed quite nicely. Supports came off really easily, other than the parts that I still need to pick off here and there. And they're all quite nicely posed. That's always a plus. Another standout to me that I really liked was this guy, the Mutant Knight. Now, this guy is on a 32mm base, and I am always a fan of mutants. And I mean, obviously, looking at the lineup so far... We have quite the assembled cast of interesting individuals. And that's one of the things that, I mean, I've harped on this channel always about. You know, I like things that kind of stand out, are a little bit different, not your average, ordinary-looking folks. Let's see here, he's got all of that kind of strapped on, kind of veiny, wormy-looking skin stitched up here and there. Ramshackle armor strapped on. Okay, maybe that's why that helmet looks familiar. He's wearing almost the same one. Interesting. And despite his overwhelming girth here on that base, he fits pretty nicely on that 32mm. Could you go bigger? Sure. I think it'd be a challenge to go a little bit smaller. I have another model I wanted to show off for you guys. This one I don't think has actually had an official viewing yet because she's supposed to be one of the very first stretch goals, and that is the Nun Witch. And again, I thought this was quite the nice model. Yes, there's a few supports tucked away here and there. Yes, I need to do a little bit better job cleaning, but overall you can see the details came out quite nicely. I like the blindfolded face. The nice flowing robes. Again, one single piece. Ned didn't have any issues getting her off of the supports. You know, gives me a very raging heroes-esque feel with the flowiness. And that's what I decided to do next, was grab a few of the more grim, dark, and flowy type models that I've got. I wanted to see, how did they fit in? Probably helps when everything's in focus. So I've got an assembled pile of models here. <coughs> Raging Heroes Dark Elf. And I decided to go explicitly with printed stuff. And obviously, are they going to fit in with Bestie Arum models? Now, our Barbarian Friend is one of the very first Bestie Arum released models, but going with some of the newer figures, I think it's going to be a pretty nice fit. Some other teammates. Oh, my little friend. Why won't you stand up? This guy is going to be annoying getting attached to a base. I think he's going to need something kind of to pile up against. <laughs> You're sitting here with somebody else, then. Works for me. I guess our Raging Heroes friend is staying in the picture. Long legs should be in there, too. I don't have many models that are going to naturally tower over him. He's a big guy. I thought I grabbed one. I did. One of the Bestiarum Gladiators. And I think, given a decent, proper paint job, these models are going to fit in great with a lot of the more grimdark aesthetic stuff. If you're into the more Blanchian, Blanchitsu style stuff, if you dig the more gothic, grimdark horror stuff like Bloodborne, Comet Lord's got a lot of stuff. Some of the more wild and out there drones. Not the drones. God, I remember what they're called. The Mircean guys. The French guys. I don't remember what they're called. But, uh, yeah, I think. They'll definitely fit in with a lot of the other models out there on the tabletop. I think if you dig that aesthetic, I mean, Kenshiro's ready to throw down with all that lot. 
I think there's a lot of fun stuff to be had there, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else is coming. So if you haven't had a chance, by all means, please do take a look at the campaign. I think they're going to be a nice set of models. And I'll be honest, I'm looking forward to seeing what else Miniatures Blueprint has in store for us. I was pleasantly surprised with these models, especially when I see something new and up and coming. That doesn't just rehash exactly the same old, same old. We don't see any of the usual dwarves, the usual elves. I like seeing stuff a little bit dirtier, a little bit grungier, and absolutely a little bit weirder. So if you're like me and dig those types of models, by all means, take a look at that link. We'll have it down below, and hopefully you guys see something there that you like just as much as me. So with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.